I've heard a lot of talk about Bleach not having characters with depth, or it features too many characters in general. This is just a few of the many criticisms directed towards the series. In response to this, and because it's not really been done before, I am determined to properly analyse the different characters of Bleach one by one. Hoping to reveal what makes the characters behave the way that they do, I will aim to do this by understanding their motivations and appreciating the relationships between the characters, written by Taito Kubo. A lot of these aspects in relation to Bleach seem to pass over people's heads, but Bleach has no shortage of unique and interesting characters, whose character arcs sync up with the plot structures of the different story arcs that they are featured in. The first character that I am beginning with is, of course, the Espada Grim Jao Jagajag. Let's find out the true meaning behind his destructive nature. Before the video begins, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any of my future uploads. Grimjow makes his first appearance in chapter 198 of the manga and in episode 116 of the Bleach anime. His first remark in the series he makes is directed towards Ukiora, as he calls him too soft for not killing Ichigo and his friends. Ukiora's reasoning is that he did not consider them to be obstacles to him. Grimjow in his introduction demonstrates his violent nature by stating that if he were in Ukiora's position and given permission to kill, then he would certainly have killed Ichigo and the others. From his first appearance we understand his personality to be very cocky laid back and short tempered. His laid back nature is shown in his unkempt messy hair, as well as his attire which is seen through the roughed up nature of his rolled up sleeves and collars which stick out, making him stand out amongst the other espada. Similarly to Kimpachi Zaraki, Grimjow also has a sadistic smile which exudes an aura of aggression and violence. He has a rebellious nature as he shows no respect for authority, not caring for others ranking or supposed strength. This results in him often speaking his mind which leads to him coming into conflict with characters with a strong moral compass like Tozen or Ukiora. He also develops a rivalry with Ichigo which leads to some of the most iconic battles within Bleach. This rivalry develops after Ichigo attacks Grimjow with a black Getsuka Tensho which leaves a giant scar across his chest. Grimjow chooses not to heal this scarring so that it serves as a reminder of his feud with Ichigo and his desire to repay Ichigo for hurting him. Grimjow is the 6th ranked Espada. The remnants of his hollow mask is from a jawbone which always reminded me of the ferocious and violent jaw of a wild cat. This thoughtfully links back to Grimjow's backstory, where he spent his past life as a panther-like Adhuchas, prior to becoming one of Aizen's Espada, as most of them were Adhuchas in their prior lives, which is the second class of Menos Hollows. To understand Grimjow's character further, Kubo gives us a glimpse of his past life as Adhuchas. A hollow is thought to have become a Gillian after consuming hundreds of human souls because of their hunger, which is caused by a void of emptiness they feel within themselves. However, under rare circumstances, some hollows become cannibals and their ravenous appetite leads to them craving hollows as a food source. These hollows through their desire to consume one another eventually merge to form a Gillian, which loses its sense of individuality and what remains is a mindless giant which holds an enormous amount of spiritual energy. While in the Gillian form, sometimes a personality of one hollow supersedes all the others which makes up its form. This Gillian develops individuality as this hollow strong personality takes over the creature. It then begins to consume other Gillians in the same ravenous as fashion as before, until it becomes an Adhuchas. In chapter 284, we see Grimjow in his Adhuchas form, which resembles a panther. When he is about to be attacked by a group of tall Adhuchas and threatened to be eaten, his fear of regressing back into a Gillian causes him to attack the leader of the group. If an Adhuchas doesn't continue to consume hollows, it will eventually revert back into a Gillian, which will result in the loss of their individuality and personality, and they will never be able to become an Adhuchas again. Grimjow forms an alliance with this group of Adhuchas and leads them as their king, so that they can together achieve the third and final hollow transformation into a Vastor Lorde. Much later on, Grimjow's group grew tired of their goal upon eating their 3000th hollow. Despite continuing to eat hollows, after consuming their 1000th hollow, they felt no change in their power. They feel they were not chosen to progress with their goal of becoming a Vastor Lorde, even stating that hollows who can become Vastor Lorde are chosen from the moment they become a hollow. Grimjow calls them cowards and continues on his path without them. Before he leaves, they request that he eats a portion of each of them, so that they may forever remain as Adhuchas. Grimjow was destined for greatness. The king was destined to tear down the cowards before him, to be the strongest, so that nobody can look down upon him. In K.M. Wylin's book, Creating Character Arcs, she states that character arcs influence the structure and the theme, even stating that character arcs equal the theme of the story. It is no secret that the underlying theme of Bleach is death. To be consistent with this theme, each of the Espada have their own aspect of death. Now where Grimjow is concerned,
concerned, Kuboro is aspect of death to be destruction. It is obvious from how I described him earlier that this perfectly matches his characteristics, personality and even reason for existing. His character desires to prove his strength by destroying anyone who stands in his way or dares to undermine him. K.M. Wyland continues to state that a character arc is shaped by the lie that they believe, what they want, what they need and the ghost, which usually is the reason for their belief in the lie that they repeat to themselves. When it comes to Grimjow, it is pretty obvious that the lie that he believes is rooted in his superiority complex. He has a constant need to display his dominance. We see this early on when he invades Karakura Town for the first time and he heads to Ichigo due to his Ryatsu being the strongest. The only person we see Grimjow respect or use honorifics with is Aizen, due to him being the only one that Grimjow believes he cannot defeat. Just take yourself back to when Aizen states that Ichigo and his friends have infiltrated Huekomundo and Grimjow tries to leave. Aizen puts the rebellious Espada in his place by using his Ryatsu to pin Grimjow onto the ground, ordering him to wait for the intruders. Grimjow is disrespectful to Tozen and Ukiora because he thinks he is stronger than them. This is shown when he attempts to attack Tozen right after Tozen cuts his arm off as a punishment for going to Karakura Town without permission. It is Aizen who stops Grimjow from following through with the attack, otherwise he would have striked Tozen without any fear. The lie that Grimjow believes is that he is stronger and better than everyone. It may stem from his 6th Esparta ranking and his need to overcome his inferiority or that he really is delusional and thinks he is the strongest. This lie that a character tends to believe is a direct result of something that is lacking in the character's life. Usually this is caused by a past event which causes the character to be the way that they are. In other words, a ghost from the past which results in the belief of the lie. The ghost is usually explained in the form of a backstory, however this isn't always required to create a memorable character, as is the case with the other Esparta. But luckily with Grimjow, we do get to see his backstory. We see how he was constantly under the pressure of regression to a prior hollow form or even being consumed if he didn't maintain his strength. His small panther-like appearance caused him to be underestimated by the other Adhuchas. Through defending himself, he proved his destructive strength and earned the respect of the Adhuchas. When the group he was leading decided to give up on becoming a Vastal Lorde, we see Grimjow refer to them as cowards due to their defeatist attitude. The group believes that Grimjow was destined for greatness. He was destined to evolve and surpass what they think is possible. Grimjow's past reveals to us a gifted character who earned his way to the top of the hollow evolutionary chain. Where others failed, Grimjow continued with perseverance. He accepted the title of king during his backstory because he believes himself to be the king. Anyone who challenges this notion or gives up on pursuing greatness is a coward in his eyes. We see him even declare that he is a king in his final battle with Ichigo, right before he is humbly defeated by him. After establishing the lie and knowing the reasoning behind it via the ghost, we can then see what it is that Grimjow wants. What exactly is it that is progressing his story forward? Throughout the events of the Arankar and Huekomundo arc, his story is intertwined with his want to defeat Ichigo. His very first words are his disgust he directs towards Ukiora for being too soft and not killing Ichigo. This causes him to go to Karakura Town of his own accord to right Ukiora's wrong by defeating Ichigo himself, thus beginning their rivalry and emphasizing Grimjow's lie of wanting to be the strongest. This is done through Ichigo's refusal to accept the difference in their power and having the courage to attack the king and scarring his body. Grimjow's need is the opposite of his want. Wants are usually fulfilled through an external physical objective, but a need that a character has is usually fulfilled through an internal realization. Ichigo tells him that he may be a king eating everything he consumes and destroying whatever it is that is in his way, but what satisfaction would he get if he was alone as a result of his actions? Wouldn't he get more enjoyment out of battling Ichigo over and over again, rather than desiring to utterly defeat and kill him in this one instance? Grimjow needs to realize his own limitations and overcome his superiority complex to accept that his rival is stronger than him. This is very similar to the rivalry between Vegeta and Goku, the proud Saiyan prince and the Pantera king. The only difference is that Vegeta eventually grows to accept that Goku is stronger than him, but Grimjow is not really given an opportunity to come to this realization in this arc. Initially, he is stronger than Ichigo, but through Ichigo's training and inherent talent, he defeats Grimjow. This is why Ichigo states that it would be far more rewarding for Grimjow to battle with him not just once, but repeatedly, as this will truly lead to him gaining strength. The lie that he believes causes him to think that he is the strongest, which is ironically limiting his own potential. Now, if he was to accept his limitations and realize that through battling his rival and growing alongside with him, this is what will cause him to become stronger. What exactly is stopping Grimjow from coming to realize he is not the strongest? Like I just said, it is his refusal to accept his limitations, as well as his tendency to be at the mercy of his own emotions, as he is very reactive and impulsive, oftentimes causing him to be caught off guard. This is the entire reason that he did not evade Noitra's attack at the conclusion of the final battle with Ichigo. He was so caught up with his desire to not give up and let Ichigo win, he was distracted. His frustrations got 
got the better of him, which causes him to get caught off guard by Noitora. It is his own pride in his own ability which blinds him and stops him from realising the truth to complete his character arc. Throughout this entire portion of the story, Grimjow is a very reactive character. He reacts to Ukiara not killing Ichigo. He reacts to Ichigo scarring him, thus wanting to kill him himself. He eventually has to face his lie that he isn't the strongest. Now, spoiler alert, when Grimjow returns in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, he is more proactive, as he chooses to help Urahara and the others by killing the Quincy in Huekomundo. He even joins forces with Urahara and helps him. In chapter 625, Grimjow finally meets Ichigo once more, but despite helping Urahara, he proves he hasn't totally reformed, as he raises his sword once more for payback against Ichigo. Ichigo. That is until Nell stops that encounter from escalating further. In chapter 626, Ichigo questions why Grimjow is helping them, to which he replies that if Yuwatch destroys Rieko Mundo, then where else will he kill him? Ichigo agrees with his response and even smiles, which shows that he respects their rivalry. What exactly is it that causes Grimjow to conflict with Ichigo? What is it about their differing ideologies that causes their rivalry to flourish? Grimjow holds a grudge against Ichigo for daring to challenge and land an attack on him, despite their vast difference in power. His first encounter encounter with Ichigo proves this, as Grimjow taunts Ichigo to unleash his Bankai, warning him that if he doesn't, he will be full of holes, just like Rukia, who he swiftly had taken out moments ago. Despite activating his Bankai, Ichigo is no match for Grimjow, who is not holding back at all. You really have to experience their first encounter, as even the anime extends this battle through Grimjow repeatedly punching Ichigo's face. You get to appreciate just how badly outmatched Ichigo was here. It is only while Grimjow is stating his disappointment in Ichigo's Bankai, and while behaving superior that he is caught off guard and takes a black Getsuka Tensho head on. Look at both of them smiling at each other in chapter 211. They both are thrilled by the challenge. Even Grimjow is surprised by Ichigo's attack. Ichigo knows that Grimjow withstanded his Getsuka Tensho as it didn't cut him anywhere near as deep as he would have liked. Seeing Ichigo's latent ability slip through makes Grimjow believe him to be worthy to kill. As Grimjow is leaving, the difference in their power is emphasised as Grimjow silences Ichigo who is yelling for him to come back as their fight isn't finished yet. Grimjow stuns Ichigo by stating that he noticed that Black Getsuka Tensho puts a strain upon his body, and even Crackley assumed Ichigo would be lucky to be able to use it another three times, before wearing himself out. He continues to tell Ichigo even a hundred Black Getsuka Tensho would be ineffective against him in his released form. His superiority complex shows once more as he leaves after grinning sadistically, while telling Ichigo his name and taunting him by saying the next time he hears his name, he will be dead. Grimjaw defeated Ichigo in their first encounter thoroughly, but it wasn't without a cost. The the scar that Ichigo leaves on his chest is a constant reminder to him of Ichigo underestimating him and daring to challenge him. Grimjow hates this feeling of being looked down upon. When he returns to Hueka Mundo after their conflict, he is demoted from the Espada and even has his arm severed, but is unable to do anything to oppose these two humiliating acts. During their second encounter, Grimjow returns, but he is no longer the sixth Espada. He battles Ichigo, who has trained with the Vizards, and thinks he can defeat Grimjow now that he can control his holo mask for 11 seconds. Their exchanges are full of of witty banter, sarcasm and everything that makes up a memorable rivalry. This second battle occurs a month after their last encounter, as Ichigo leaves Grimjow severely injured, due to a Getsuka Tensho that he fires at point blank range while his holo mask is equipped. After Ichigo's mask breaks, Grimjow begins to beat down Ichigo for the second time. In the manga, we see Grimjow Zanpakuto pin Ichigo to the ground, while he plans to repay the favour by firing a Sero at point blank range. Rukia and Shinji eventually come to Ichigo's aid. While Shinji battles Grimjow, he also taunts him by asking if he has any control over himself, because every time Shinji dodges one of his attacks, something ends up being destroyed. Shinji sarcastically remarks he is thinking twice before dodging them due to the damage that is being inflicted to the surroundings. This remark by Shinji is completely in line with affirming Grimjow's aspect of death, which is destruction. During their final encounter, their differing ideologies are pitted against each other. As Grimjow demonstrates how badly he wants to win, Ichigo realises that Grimjow wants to kill him because of how Ichigo looks at him. Ichigo even sympathises with this feeling of being looked down upon. Grimjow wants to crush anyone who dares to look down on him, through challenging him and questioning his superiority. However, Ichigo answers Grimjow and affirms his reason to not only defeat Grimjow, but also Ukiora and Aizen too, because he wants to return back with his friends that he has vowed to protect. Losing to Grimjow is not an option for Ichigo. It is this stubborn persistence which angers Grimjow, which is the source of their conflict and their differing ideologies. Grimjow is infuriated by Ichigo, who seems to believe he can defeat him, 
despite sometimes not understanding how outmatched he is. This feeling of being underestimated by Ichigo clashes with Grimjar's belief of being the strongest, the one not to be taken lightly. In addition to their personal reasonings, their feud is also deep rooted in history. As we see from the covers of chapter 279 and 280, they are titled Jugulators, suggesting that their feud is a manifestation of the blood which flows through their veins. The long standing battle between the Shinigami and the Hollow, which is depicted by their rivalry, suggesting that they were destined to battle each other all along. Despite their feud and rivalry, the two do end up respecting one another, as Grimjaw brings Orihime to Ichigo so that she can heal him before they fight evenly, as he wants Ichigo in his best condition before he kills him. After Grimjaw's brief scrap with Ukiora, Ichigo even asks for Grimjaw to be healed, so that he doesn't have an excuse after he is defeated. Like a true rivalry, both of these characters seem to have a sort of respect for one another, while also wanting to dethrone the other. For Grimjaw, however, this is far more important than it is for Ichigo, due to his desire to be superior. While Ichigo defeats Grimjaw, he respectfully lowers him to the ground, and even defends him against an attack from Noitora. Both of them also complement each other throughout their final encounter, and it makes for a very satisfying final battle. Without a doubt, Grimjaw is incredibly likeable, and will always be remembered as one of the most memorable villains from Taite Kubo's manga series Bleach. His appeal stems from his impulsive and downright psychotic actions. After Grimjaw was pretty badly wounded due to his encounter with Shinji, Aizen demonstrates Orihime's power by healing Grimjaw's left arm. After his arm is healed, he requests for his Espada number to be healed on his back also, just before he impales Lupi, who replaced him as the sixth Espada. Maniacally, he laughs as he reclaims his position and demonstrates his appeal due to how unpredictable his actions and behaviours are. Grimjaw for me is one of my favourite anime villains, and I hope that this breakdown and analysis does justice to his character. I would love to know your thoughts, and what other Bleach or anime characters you would want me to analyse in my upcoming videos.